The following is a recording of a panel discussion on building relationships from the state up at the Citizens Climate Lobby Wild West Regional Conference on September 30th, 2018. The participants are Piper Christian, a student from Logan, Utah, Becky Edwards, a Republican state legislator from Utah, Michael Shea, Senior Policy Associate from Heal, Utah, and Carrie Butler, Policy Director for Action, Utah. Tom Moyer, Utah State Coordinator for CCL, was the moderator. So I will kind of fill you in briefly on the process that kind of brought us up to where Representative Edwards picked it up and kind of touch upon the student role because that was really where, where I played a big part. Um, so Senator DeBacchus sponsored our resolution. Um, and many of you may know he is a, about a, a, as bleeding blue liberal as the state legislature has. He's very outspoken. Um, and so our resolution, um, one of the first stops it made was in the Senate Natural Resources Committee. And that's where we really hit our first roadblock. Um, the chair of that committee informed us that unless we removed the words climate change from our climate change resolution, <laughs> we, we not only would get a not even get a hearing. So we wouldn't, not only would they not pass it through the committee, we wouldn't have a chance to even speak. Um, and we really thought that, you know, that was not in line with our idea of the democratic process and getting to share your perspective, at least. Um, and so instead, it would have been a really great time to give up and just call it quits. But um, Senator DeBacchus graciously set up a mock hearing in the state legislature because he believed you at least deserve a chance to speak. And we really got a lot of attention around the state about this. We, um, we invited over 100 students to come to the state capitol. We had numerous news organizations um, and a lot of environmental organizations, um, these folks included. <laughs> and um, we were able to pack one of the biggest conference rooms in the capitol to standing room only. And we had students from elementary school to college testify about why climate is an important issue for young Utahns. We even had an elementary student with marker, you know, a piece of paper with marker written out on why she cares about this um, speak. And um, I think most importantly, we were able to have um, a lot of legislators attend and show their support of that. And that's, I believe, where it kind of caught uh, Senator Edward, or Representative Edwards' attention. Um, so that kind of brings us up to the 2017 legislative session, and she can kind of touch upon um, on her process once it was able to be brought to the House. Um, but before I pass it on, I just wanted to quickly touch upon the student role within this effort because I really think that was critical. Um, I think first, um, every time our bill was voted on, students from across Utah would attend every hearing and give polished testimonies about why climate change is important to them and why this resolution matters. Um, and in addition, every time there was a vote, particularly during the 2018 legislative session, we would organize a meeting of high school students and we'd put a spreadsheet of every person in the House or every person in the Senate and students would call every single one and try to have a conversation with them about why they should vote for this resolution or at least get their input about what language should be changed in order to get it passed. And in addition to that, we would engage within our communities because not all students can go straight to the state legislature. So we would get up at 7.30 a.m. on Saturdays um, throughout the legislative session and talk with our legislators and stay after their town hall meetings and really get their input. Um, and finally, I think we can, uh, Edwards and the others can touch upon um, our Climate Solutions for a Healthy um, Future event. And we um, organized our own event where students could have conversations with their legislatures legislators about um, this resolution and really get their input. Um, so I really believe that the student role um, played a critical part, but also this would not have been possible without the organizations and Representative Edwards' support. So I'll hand it off to them. Thank you. So chapter two begins uh, the night of the, it was, was an evening in January when this mock uh, panel began. And the legislative rooms is, you know, a bunch of seats like this and then a big semicircle of uh, places where legislators sit. And we were all sitting up there and, and it was not a, an official meeting, 
but it, as Piper said, it was student after student after student presenting their thoughts, and they were polished and reasoned and um, knowledgeable and impressive. And I was sitting next to um, Representative Joel Briscoe, who is a Democrat from Salt Lake City, and I said to him, oh, this is, this is the hashtag Utah. Um, the church is next door. <laughs> yeah, just, you know, this is, this is a twofer. Like, I don't know here. The M's next door. <laughs> All right. Anyway, sorry. That is, that is classical conditioning, if I've ever heard it. What? 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 All right, squirrel. Um, okay. Back to, I turn to Representative Briscoe, and I say, uh, man, these students are amazing. It's really too bad we can't get a legitimate hearing on this because this is this is impressive and it's also important. And he said, well, maybe there is a way. Do you know anybody who has an empty boxcar bill? Now, boxcar bills normally, unless you want to use one, are they're bad because what they are is a legislator who opens a bill file and with some innocuous title like government amendments that means nothing and you don't know what's in there and then at the very last minute it's certain that they're going to throw in a bunch of language that's going to throw everything you know to hell in a handbasket and you're not going to know what is in the bill until the very last minute and that's what a boxcar bill is um, just an empty thing waiting for your demise. And, uh, so normally I hate them, but I'm like maybe I do know someone. And I know one of my fellow legislators who opens up like 20 box cars every year just in case. So we, um, but that's a, a one option. The other option was going to Senator DeBacchus, who was the sponsor of this bill at this time, and saying, hey, Jim, will you can you assign the bill to me? Because you can flip a bill between legislators. And he said, sure, it's never going anywhere in the Senate. The Rules Committee is never assigning this to a, to a committee. So he said, all right, send it over, assign it to me, and we'll see what we can do on the House side. See if we can muscle our own Rules Committee to give us a hearing at least in, in a committee of some kind. So um, he did. And then we got to work on the House side, and this was with maybe a week left in the legislative session, maybe just a few days. And Representative Briscoe had a super awesome intern named Carson Ellers, I think is his last name. And we said to Carson, Carson, um, you are a you know, college junior and you've grown up in Utah, you're a student at University of Utah, and you've also had, so this means you've had some kind of political science classes. We need you to take everything that's written in this resolution and I need you to republicanize it. <laughs> and do, do your best. I cannot help you with this language at all because I'm in deep in the last few days of the session and, and he so he was on to that immediately and we we through Jack and others said also we didn't just say that to him, we said look at the Climate Solutions Caucus um, and con Congressional Climate Solutions Caucus and also this resolution that was in Florida, I think, from, was it in Texas? Anyway, somewhere said, look at this and see what you can come up with. So he brought stuff back and we're like, nah, it's not gonna work. Go back to the drawing board, keep working, keep working. And finally he brought something like that. I think we can get this through. I think I can get this through rules. And um, through a lot of conversations and building on long-term relationships, like I said, I've been in, this, in the legislature for 10 years, and I was able to get a hearing in the committee I chair, which was Economic Development and Workforce Services. So that's a funny committee to be hearing a climate change <laughs> resolution, but you do what you can, and you use your, your muscle and your power where you can, and we, that was our committee. And then we started working on the members of the committee. Yes, vote, at least listen, at least whatever. And that's where the students really started to do some, I'm gonna say the word micro-targeting, but not in a bad way. Micro-targeting um, in a good way that they started to reach out to every single member of that committee and, and uh, talk to them 
in a very, very amazingly polite way. And then other groups um, like Keel, like Action Utah, they also got involved in, in working that committee. So we have our day, this is literally the very last day of that any committee can hear any bill. And it, it finally comes to our committee and we hear the bill and it has a vote of five to five. And that is a tie, which in legislative world is a kill. Um, but we tried to not phrase it like that. We tried to say we didn't have enough votes to get passed out. Because it was not a, it, it was a win of a sort to even get to that point, to even get a committee was a win. And I'll never forget standing outside the committee that day with students and others and saying, this was a win. You take yourselves out for an ice cream cone when you go home. <laughs> <laughs> this is yeah, good. You may not understand that in the world of the legislature, but what just happened is a win. You have <clears throat> rural members of the committee um, listening and talking about what this would mean to their to their area of the state and what this would mean. And we had some small slivers of. of of an opening for further conversations, we thought, oh, there's hope, there's hope here. And at that point, we said, let's get working on this and do this for real next year. And Carrie, you want to take it from there? Chapter three. <laughs> <laughs> Chapter three. Uh, What's the movie coming out? <laughs> I think that it might be a very good movie. I have some requests on who would play me. So, Piper doesn't know this, but I'm a super, super secret, super fan, and now not so secret. So, I had um, a friend of mine from the Department of Health call me. Um, at Maps on the Hill, after Maps on the Hill day, and she said, hey, I met this amazing girl named Piper, and I really think you ought to meet her. I'm like, oh, I've heard of Piper. <laughs> because I have, because she's amazing. She wants to run this climate resolution, and I told her to go talk to Jim Backus, and I was like, yes, that's a good plan. So I was really pleased to hear the, how it all played out, and how it all shook down, and very impressed from the behind the scenes, secretly. So I've been a super fan for a long time. <laughs> okay, so chapter three. May of May of last year, we met at a coffee shop, and our um, executive director, Andrea, is very tenacious, and she said, we want to help finish this. I would like to work on this language. Carrie, what that means is I want you to work on this language. <laughs> so I was the Carson in this scenario. And uh, we, we, we took the language, and uh, along with uh, Jesse Kreiber from Heal, we sat in a different coffee shop, and we pulled all of the Republican language we could find, and all the conservative language we could find, and we landed on the LDS um, Environmental Stewardship website. Are you guys familiar with that? Yes. yes. So we tried to start incorporating language from that, because that's my... I live in Utah, I was raised LDS. I, that is my home language, that's my home base. It felt good to me, it resonated with me. So we started putting some of those words into the resolution and then we actually even met um, some stranger that was sitting next to us. And uh, we asked him, what would you put in this thing? <laughs> 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 hey man, what would you say instead of this? And he was, he was like, it was a fun game for him. He started like, there was like categories. He's like throwing out all these words, we're like, yes, <laughs> And that's chapter three, that's how the story of the language. Um, but actually, in addition to that, we had also been meeting with several uh, legislators over the course of the few months, including Representative um, Ray Ward from uh, Davis County. And I don't know if you've ever worked with Ray Ward, but he can be very, um, we just call it warding out, he like wards out on us. <laughs> and when we met with him and we were talking to him about climate, he was like, listen, you gotta stop throwing everything and the kitchen sink in with this, or you're never gonna get people, including me, like, I don't even know what I'm thinking about when, when you're talking about this. And we left the meeting thinking, I don't think he's on our team, but he ended up being one of the greatest supporters of uh, climate, where he worked, wrote his own climate resolution, which was way stronger and way better than the one that we were like crafting in this coffee shop. And, uh, but he gave us some really good insights on how to actually talk to people about it, because he was one of those people that needed to be talked uh, needed to be, not convinced, but needed to be talked to in his own language. So um, 
So that happened, and now I've lost my train of thought. <laughs> so I think we probably need to go next to the um, the climate panel we held on the at the Capitol. Mm -hmm. So that's either Representative Edwards or Piper or. Uh, so let me just take a quick and then I'll pass it to sure. Piper. Yeah. So after that, we had some language and we started to kind of move on. We had a meeting at the at the Capitol in the middle of the, it felt like the fall, wasn't it? In yes. like September or something and, and brainstorming. It was a group of, I think uh, Jeff was there, Tom, I think you, Michael, Carrie, and, and yeah, and uh, Mike Squires, who was then congressional staffer for Mia Love. Um, was there we were like okay how do we prep for this what's gonna happen just brainstorm like crazy ideas and an idea came up that let I know let's throw a party in essence let's throw an event at the Capitol for legislators during the session where we could have a formal sit down with the students and supporters of this and what would that look like and how could we organize it and who's gonna do that and pretty much it was like okay here you go you, you be in charge of this, and, and I'll tell you why I felt comfortable doing that. Because by then, I had um, months of witnesses of, of uh, seeing these students, and also the, the CCL people and the people on our team uh, have, I, I'd seen their conversations, I'd seen their interactions with people, and I had developed trust of them. Um, I, I knew a little bit about the CCL, and in, in fact, last night I was at a different event, and um, Sam Daly Harris, who you're going to hear from in a minute, uh, was speaking to a group I was there with, and was talking about presentations that he, and trainings he's done for, for other groups, and on one of his slides it said, CCL, and I'm like, oh, I know them, and, and you know, talked about his training with them, and after it was finished, I said, you need to know something. You need to know that you have trained CCL. CCL has trained a group of high school students, and they perfectly epitomize everything you're teaching. Everything you're training, everything that, all the principles and values that you're talking about, these students exemplify that. And because I knew that I could trust them, I felt completely comfortable saying, plan an event. Plan an event, and as part of the event, hey, why don't we just set up little tables and have high school students sit down with legislators and just talk? Well, that never ever happens, and who feels comfortable setting a group of high school students, 16-year-old boys, at a table when they're super passionate about something? Who thinks that's a recipe for success? I don't know, but I'm telling you, it was. And it was a good part because these students knew they were knowledgeable, but they also were incredibly um, polite, they were incredibly understanding, and I never heard them say, oh, Representative, he's just a crazy old loon. He's, oh, he's just so frustrating. I mean, we don't know the things that we could say about people that are like that, but I never heard them ever say any, it was a, an amazing, and I don't think it was just self-restraint. I think it was um, belief in an approach that was incredibly effective. So anyway, kudos to CCL who worked with these, people, these students because they were truly amazing. And I think all of us who worked with them really learned a lot about um, how to be effective and really what democracy and civic, civic and civil civic engagement should look like. And now hybrid party. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was definitely, and I want to touch upon too how I think the the most a lot of people ask us like how do you engage students in CCL approach, CCL approach and things like that, and I think the people here really have mastered it in that there were so many moments where there's they showed genuine trust in us, and it was truly and and I think what that looks like is a lot of here is this big idea now like run with it. And um, you know, we had plenty of deer in the headlights moments. But, and you know, when it came down to it, um, when you, I think students can pick up when when adults trust them with genuine leadership positions. And I think you know, uh, 
A true mentor is someone that says, like, I have this vision for you and I know you can live up to it. And I, and so I was incredibly grateful for CCL and all the folks involved for letting us kind of work with that. Um, and so when we were envisioning it, the first thing we thought, and it comes right from the CCL handbook, kind of CCL approach, is that you have to have a messenger. Um, you, if we're going to really connect with these legislators, they need to hear about climate change from a trusted source. And so we started brainstorming folks in Utah that these legislators would trust. And um, the first was um, Laura Nelson, who is from the Governor's Office on Energy Development. Is that correct? Um, so she comes right from the governor. She's a representative. And then we started thinking of other folks, leaders in uh, policy, leaders in um, climate science. We had Robert Davies, from uh, a physicist from Utah State University, um, and, and students. We had a BYU student who was present as well. And so what we did was we set up a panel of trusted messengers, as I would say. And, um, and basically, we wanted them to speak about why climate change could be seen as a conservative, uh, Republican issue to take on. Um, and so, oh, and then, I almost forgot, um, as, as many of you know, for Utah, Mia Love has been an excellent messenger of climate um, discussions in our state. And so we were able to get her to give a virtual statement, and we opened our panel with um, Mia Love talking about climate. And so, I think this really, and then we were able to invite, uh, I believe we had, what percent of the legislature attended? It was 20, 22%. Yeah, yeah, which considering that it was the what, first week of the legislative session, um, they have about, you know, I remember there were tons of other things that were pulling them, but we were able to get them to our event, and I think that was because of those relationships. We'd already been working so hard to build with the help of other organizations as well. Um, so we started our, our, our event with these, with these messengers sharing about it, and then we had tables all around the room, and as students, um, we worked with CCL, and we wrote a list of questions that the students would ask their legislators. And so that way the students would feel comfortable talking to them. And the students, we had about 30 students show up early before the event, and we kind of talked to them about, okay, there's going to be moments of hostility and moments of mistrust. You know, and but how do you approach that? Is this what do we really have to gain from arguing or something? Really, nothing. And so, if anything, get their input. Find out why they don't like our resolution. If they don't like it, write those things down because that's going to be valuable information. And then share with them your perspective in a really um, respectful, polite way. Um, and it was so incredible that after this panel. Um, Looking around the room, and we have folks like Senator Mike Noel, um, who's from rural Utah, who's about as pro fossil fuels and against climate, you know, climate action as one would imagine, having discussions with sophomores, juniors, college students, and it it was as I could see going quite well. You know, the students left as being like, oh, okay, like I think he was a nice guy. He was, I mean, he was. There were moments of like, you know, where we clearly didn't see eye to eye, but we were able to get a lot from it. And, um, and what we tried to do too is, um, again from the CCL approach, is find, we were able to find students who were constituents of that legislator. So we were able to get kids from Utah Valley talking to their, um, those representatives. And um, I really just think it started the legislative session on such a good note because they could have these trusted messengers. And then I think when you talk to students in particular, it's hard to be hostile when you're talking to a 16-year-old kid. <laughs> or, okay, I mean, there's certainly settings where you would feel hostile. But I think, I, I think in this context, you know, you can see that it's just kids who are genuinely interested in talking to you. And, it's, and I think that putting students out front is incredibly valuable in, in kind of having legislators kind of let their guard down and be able to be more, more open and less hostile. Do you want to talk about? Yeah, let me set this up for Michael. Yeah. Uh, I met Michael first early in the planning stages of this event, and, and we had some conversation. Uh, it started with like, oh wait, you're talking to legislators about HCR 7? Oh, so are we. I guess we better start talking to each other. <laughs> and, uh, and then we talked about this, uh, this climate event we were going to host, and Michael expressed some uncertainty as to whether things were, you know, whether we people working on this who have done this before, and I was like, no. Nah. Broken high school students have got this. <laughs> Nothing to worry about. <laughs> so Michael, it would be great if you would take us through uh, your involvement, especially the the corporate support, 
because when you first proposed a business sign-on letter, I was like, yeah, whatever, okay, great, that sounds good. <laughs> and it turned out to be like a key linchpin. And then the whole committee hearing process, and <coughs> targeting individual legislators and who we've got and who we don't have. And yeah, take it away. For sure. Um, so yeah, we, uh, like Tom said, we kind of, this is um, in the fall of, of 2017, kind of heading into the winter, uh, you know, we sort of heard about sort of multiple climate resolutions being, being thrown around there. And, uh, you know, it's certainly something that, that you know, Heal's very concerned about. And we we're like, well, let's, let's, you know, let's talk to uh, who's involved in this. And then sort of that got us in deeper. And the next thing you know, we're sort of in the trenches with, with everybody. And, you know, this, last, this time last year was going to be my, I was heading into my third uh, Utah legislative session. Um, which was enough to turn me into a hard cynic and age me about 20 years. Um, but, you know, you, you begin to learn things. Uh, you know, your first session, you're kind of up there, and you're sort of this, this wide-eyed, all this stuff is happening, and, uh, you know, it's, it's easy to sort of, you're barely keeping your head up, up uh, above water. Um, but you begin to pick up things, um, and then you start to understand how how the how the sausage is made. Um, and you know, I think there's there's sort of the you know the, the biggest thing with with the Utah legislature is understanding that there's a there's sort of a, a public level um, where you know everybody sits in committees and you know we hear everybody out and then we you know take our take our votes and then that's that's how the process works. Um, but and that's that is true. I mean that that certainly happens. But beneath that, there's there's a layer of, of sort of the how the system. Uh, I don't want to say really works, but it's certainly understanding how the system, um, how sort of the below layer system influences that public mechanism, and it's understanding that there's you know at certain times there's literally you know <laughs> one or two legislators that you know will make the decision on your bill. Um, now, is that fair? Probably not, but that is kind of how the system and uh, the system works. And so, at the very beginning, you're, uh, when you when you come with a bill, the first thing you have to do is, is get it out of the the rules committee. Um, and this is the committee that basically decides. You know, they look at all these different bills and they decide uh, which committee the bill goes to. And uh, in more nefarious ways, uh, they can often just hold bills that they don't want to see, um, so they never have to get a vote, uh, they never have to be heard, and it's quite frustrating. And um, the, <laughs> the particular legislator who was in charge of rules, who was the chair, was Mike Noel. Um, and, and so we knew we, we knew we were in uh, in for a for a rough right out of the gate. Um, but Representative Edwards, um, you know, has spent a lot of time, you know, working with Mike and, and cultivating that relationship and building trust and, you know, not understanding that we're we're going to agree on everything, but uh, enough to at least say let's have the conversation. And so, thanks to Becky, we, we got it out of, out of rules, uh, which was sort of a, a miracle um, at the beginning. But that, you know, and that's just the beginning of the process. Um, you know, next up, you have uh, the committee hearing. And, you know, if people are hearing your bill, if legislators are hearing your bill at the very, for the very first time in that committee hearing, it means you haven't done your work. Um, because, you know, they hear so many bills so quickly, um, that a lot of it is just noise. And so you have to go to each individual on that committee, talk to them, work them through, hear their issues, hear what they, you know, what language they want to change, um, you know, build trust. And so by the time you get to that committee vote, uh, you, know, you actually know the, what the vote is going to be. And um, so we had our, we had our uh, House Natural Resources Committee uh, hearing, and, and the students came down and just blew it out of the water. And you know, I, I think you know we were we were looking. I was feeling sort of on the fence which way we're going to go. But as soon as the students started testifying, um, man, we 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 knew we had it in the bag. Um, and then, but then it, you know, at every level of this, it gets harder and harder. And so after we got it out of the committee hearing um, or the committee, we knew okay, now now we have to head to the floor vote. We need the whole house to to vote on this. And that's where the idea of the, the business sign-on letter uh, came in, because you know uh, between 
you know, Healy, Utah, and Action, Utah, and the students, um, you know, sadly, that was not enough uh, to convince the Utah legislature to, to vote. Um, but they do listen to business. Uh, they, you know, a lot of these guys are, you know, capitalists, and, and uh, business voices carry a little more weight than uh, with some legislators than, than we do. And so we started talking to uh, some of the prominent businesses, and um, you know, we we managed to get uh, Rocky Mountain Power, which is a you know Utah's utility, um, kind of coal heavy, uh, but they do they do have climate goals, and so we got them to sign on, and then we got Rio Tinto to sign on, and then we got the Utah Technology Council to sign on. Um, and we ended up. Michael, with this, I'm going to stop oh, you like yeah. I stopped Piper there and ask for a little more detail, <laughs> because there's there's a significant back and forth here of like who's going to go first and who's going to go on and only if other people go on and oh my god is so and so going to show up to the committee hearing and we don't know so if you could expand that a little bit yeah yeah so um, Rocky Mountain Power uh, and Heal don't have the most cordial relationship. <laughs> um, we, uh, we take great joy in sort of meeting them up in the press and uh, for the last you know, couple of years, and we had just gotten out of this uh, sort of big rooftop solar fight with them, um, where they wanted to sort of increase rates on, on rooftop solar owners. We obviously didn't like that. And we, we, <laughs> we went through this sort of bruising year-long process uh, negotiating, trying to figure out a compromise, which we ended up doing. Um, needless to say, we were not their favorite people. Um, and so when I, you know, who better than a utility, though, to, to sign on to a, a business letter recognizing climate change? Um, and so, you know, I, I approached them, and I had known their government affairs uh, person for a while, and this kind of gets back to relationships and, and building relationships, um, even with people you strongly disagree with. Um, so we approached him and kind of pitched him the idea and, and you know, walked him through the language and talked to him about our legislative strategy. And that was something they were really concerned about. They didn't want to sign on to something that, that, that you know, was a message bill that we knew that they thought, you know, wasn't going to pass. And so, you know, we kind of talked through it. We, you know, we sat down with, with Becky and, um, you know, he's like, all right, well, let me, let me take it to my bosses and, uh, you know, we'll see. Fully expecting them to say no. I was like, all right, you know, you greedy utility, like coal loving utility, you're never going to sign on to this. Um, but then, sure enough, uh, he calls me a week later, and he's like, we're in. Um, you can use you can use our name, uh, and that sort of started a cascading effect. Um, and once you get one big name, uh, the rest followed. And you know, Rio Tinto, uh, which is you know owns Kennecott Copper Mine. Um, they have climate goals as well, um, but they needed some sort of cover uh, to sort of take that initial step. And so once they knew Rocky Mountain Power was on board, Rio signed up, and then that sort of just uh, spiraled. And next thing you know, yeah, we had about 20, I think about 20, like 12 or 15 businesses um, on, this, on this letter. And, you know, the great thing about that is, you know, because... Legislators are getting hit with so much, you only have a couple minutes to kind of pitch your bill. Um, being able to just hand them this letter saying, these are the businesses that are in support of this resolution. You know, we had all their logos on there, so it was super easy to see, super easy to understand. Um, it was a huge help, and uh, certainly certainly helped, uh, I think, getting it passed out of, out of the house. Um, we actually got Mike Noel's yes vote, uh, which he promptly changed on the next vote uh, to a no, but <laughs> we had we had our one moment, um, and then and then uh, you know the thing, <laughs> and so the thing with the legislature is you know everything important happens kind of in the last two weeks. Um, the rest is 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 a lot of noise, um, and in the last two weeks, you know things get crazy. Um, bills are sort of being pushed back and forth, and you get caught between negotiations between the Senate and the House leadership. And so we, you know, had to make sure that our, our little bill uh, was kind of protected as all these sort of negotiations and decision-making processes were, were happening. Um, and it, you know, it, uh, Representative Edwards' sort of talent uh, of, of being of the legislature really, really came out and, you know, her understanding of sort of when to push and when not to push and how hard to push 
um, is 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 really uh, pro. I mean, she's good, <laughs> and, um, and it you know without her skill, we we certainly would not have uh, been able to get it through the sausage making process. And it you know wasn't over until it's over. And so we actually got it passed out of the Senate committee, you know, passed out of the House, we got it out of the Senate committee, we got it out of the Senate. Um, the final vote uh, is what's called concurrence because the, we had to change the wording a little bit to get the governor's office on board. And so the, the draft language was different in the House than it was in the Senate. And so you have to send it back to the House for concurrence. And uh, I, you know, the best moment of the whole session was, was watching that, that board and all the yes votes come in, and uh, and we got it, and uh, it was it was truly a you know remarkable experience, and certainly uh, you know infused me with some much needed optimism about <laughs> life and the uh, the process in general. Um, but it's great, and you know the lesson is is um, you know you don't have to like the process, but you should, and you absolutely need to understand it. Um, because you know, people working against our interests certainly understand it, um, and you know, it's it's to our detriment to uh, not you know know how the sausage is being made. <laughs> All right. I, so I'd like to hear a little more from Representative Edwards about that final piece because you guys were educating me at this time. I didn't know that it's not enough just to have the votes. You can have a good bill that has enough votes to pass and simply run out of time in the legislature. And there was huge worry on the, the last day and the next to last day about, are we going to get a final vote in time? And Representative Edwards made that happen. And I think we could all stand to hear a little more about how. Well, well timing does matter. It's really important. And, and if we go back to the 2017 session, um, it sort of glossed over the fact that we got a committee assignment on the last day that you could hear bills in committee. And remember that what was just mentioned about the Rules Committee, the Rules Committee had been holding that bill. And um, I knew it was important because even though it probably wasn't going to pass in 2017, I knew it was important groundwork for 2018 when I thought we could probably pass this. So I talked to the Rules Chair. He was a solid no. So this is, I don't support this at all. So then I just moseyed right on up to the Speaker of the House as he's sitting in the front of the chamber. I'm like, hey, Speaker, <laughs> this climate change resolution, excuse me, I have this environmental stewardship resolution. <laughs> yeah, words matter. And uh, I just really need your support to, uh, I need, is it okay with you if this comes out of rules and we put it to economic development, and I said, just so you know, if it's not okay with you, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to stand on the floor and make a motion to um, take the bill out of rules and make the assignment myself. Now that's like, whoa, no one likes that. So basically, what I'm, I'll nicey-nice at the beginning, but if you say no, I have my plan B and my nuclear bomb's going off. <laughs> and he's like, uh, no, 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 that's fine, that's fine. Tell, tell Mike that it's fine, he can, he can send it to your committee. It's not going to pass, is it? And I, said, <laughs> and I said, probably not. He said, okay, as long as it doesn't pass, you're fine. <laughs> so we go back to, to Representative Noel, and it feels a little like her school child. You're like, oh, by the way, um, the speaker says we can have it come out. <laughs> He's like, are you sure you talked to the speaker? I'm like, I did. He said, all right. I see him on the phone. The speaker answers the phone. He hangs up. He's like, all right, you got it. So timing really mattered there because without that, it would have been, our only option would have been for me to stand up and make that, make that motion. And I don't think I would have had the, it would have been two-thirds a vote, two-thirds support required to uh like I guess go against the will of the of the rules committee. Anyway, so now we're back to 2018, and this very same rules committee is is holding the bill, and um, so it takes a lot of conversations with the rules committee to say, hey, we, it's better. It's not climate change of 2017. This is environmental stewardship of 2018. And look at the words, and look at the changes, and everything. You could feel good about this. 
And, and now the bill has passed out of the frustrating thing, I think for us, Mike has done a lot of work with the governor's office trying to go through the language, everything. They'd signed off, yes, 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 yes. Passes out of the House committee, now the House floor, goes to the Senate. And before it goes to the Senate, now we hear that the, the governor's office doesn't like, it was like the inclusion of, of public health, that there was some detriment or impact on public health. And we're like, well, actually got this straight from your Department of Health study that the governor commissioned and the Department of Health is one of, it's under you. So we're not making this up. We're just literally lifting this from yours. But okay, we do not want to derail this at this point. So all right, fine. And that was hard because every word was like your baby. And every time you had to take out a word, you felt like a stab in the heart. Oh, man. Now it means less, and we've already come to like this tipping point of just balance of where it still meant something, but where it still could get passed. And that was a very, very careful balance. So it was sad to have to take that out. Uh, but at the same time, we knew that we wanted the governor on board, and we knew that we wanted at the end, when the governor does a ceremonial signing, we knew, I mean, he signs all the bills within a certain number of days after the session, but we knew we wanted a ceremonial signing with the governor and the fancy desk and the pretty room and all the people behind. And in order to do that, we knew we needed to take that, those words out. But if you change the bill between the House and the Senate, then the bill has to come back for an agreement from the House because what they voted on is the bill's different now. And so <laughs> the bill went to the Senate committee. Again, we have this, these wonderful students. We have a representative from business who also testified. And the most amazing thing, I think, of almost the whole story is that that bill passed out unanimously out of the Senate committee. This is a committee that wouldn't even hear the, the bill in 2017. Now, it's it was different, but I can't tell you how much a label Means This was still, it doesn't matter if we called it environmental stewardship in the title of the resolution, it was still a climate bill. Everybody knew that. And these were the very same people who were a solid no the previous year. And it was incredibly meaningful to see that. That's, that was a, a, a committee meeting that really was meaningful to me and really almost made me teary because I thought, I'm not sure these students realize what they're doing, and I think Piper called them um, the spokespeople or the messengers, messengers, right? And whether you call them the messengers or the ambassadors, they're an important part of, of the process, and choosing the right people to be those messengers um, is important. Anyway, so then it goes to the Senate floor, and there were comments on the Senate floor when it was being debated, and you're, you're still nervous because even if people say there's a yes on a bill, they could change, and they could say, well, I heard this in the debate on the floor, change my mind. So you don't solid no until the vote comes out, and then the bill comes back to the House. Now we're in the last few days of the session, and we have literally hundreds of bills that we still have to hear, and we probably pass... 530 bills last year in 45 days. So what you need to know is in the first week, I think we passed 25 bills. And then the last week we passed, I'm gonna say 150. Um, it's, just a, it's just a lot of stuff that's happening and it's a long list and you kind of go through this, this queue. And at the beginning of the session, it's all very orderly and your bill just moves up like you know a British queue waiting for the tube and, and then they just go off. But at the end of the session, it'll, you'll just show up one day and be like, wait, I thought my bill was first on, in line and now it's like number 24, what happened? And the bill, the, the board of all the lists of the bills gets what they call wiped and then leadership does this magic show in quiet back rooms and then the bill, which is just called prioritization, um, and then they, the bills go back up on the board and they are in, and you could have been literally number one or two, and now you are down at the bottom. And this can happen numerous times in an official way or in an unofficial way, and it is frightening. It, it's just absolutely true. And 
we we had we have a speaker in the house who's leaving the legislature after this year. So you, you want him, you want his support, but at the same time, you can't say to him, "Look at how this is going to benefit you next year." Mm -hmm. You you can't leverage his his future political activities. You know what I'm saying? Like like bump us to the top. You can't do that. You have to really use the idea. This is the this is the right thing to do. We have come so far on this issue, and this is such a tenuous balance that could be flipped any second. Don't let us down. Help us, please. Prioritize this. And it was at like 7:30 the last night, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. And I to, to live with that stress. <laughs> it's really true because it could. I've had bills that were second in line and just died because by our state constitution, we have to end at midnight. Some states go on and they're like, okay, well, let's have another week, get the work done. No, we end at midnight on the last day, of day 45. And so there were a lot of conversations with leaderships basically saying, don't let us down, we cannot do this again. And saying, do you want Utah to be a leader? This is an opportunity for Utah to be the first red state to do this. That's, we should be proud of this. But you also couldn't say that too much because then they thought, wait, but let me read through this again. I thought you said this was no big deal. <laughs> is this earth shattering or is this no big deal? So it's like Some, one of my colleagues who was a, a soft, a very tenuous yes, and saying, just so you know that word you wanted taken out, we can't do it. We're not going to be able to do that. It's too important to us. So I, I'm afraid that means you're going to be a no. And I told you I would try and take that out, but as we talk to my team, it's just not going to happen. So I know that means you're probably going to be a no. And that person ended up being a yes because, and I went up to him after, I'm like, Thanks for your guest vote. Because we did come out of the house with, I don't remember the exact vote, like 45 to 22 or 50 to 20, something like that. And so we needed we needed every vote. And I said, thank you. I wasn't expecting your yes vote. You, you know we left that word in, right? And he said, yeah, I know. But I appreciated your coming and talking to me about it. I appreciated that you told me that you came over on the floor and said, that word's still there. And you're going to be a no. And he said, just knowing that you had respect for me to to come tell me that and to own that, um, said I couldn't really vote against that. I voted yes. And um, yeah. happy moments. Thank you. Happy There's moments. Carrie. I wanted about to back to you already. I, whatever you're going to add, please do. But I also would like you to add a little bit about your conversations with the LDS Church. Because oh, right. Action Utah, we haven't really made it clear, but Action Utah was involved in every bit of this, not just in the bill drafting. I keep getting distracted. <laughs> <laughs> so I know there are so many good stories. Some of the stories, my favorite story. And I just want to reiterate how important it was that we were standing there and we're like, this is going to be great. It's going to be a fun event. Too bad we can't get like the key guys here. And in walks Representative Noel, and all of us have our jaws dropped to the ground. And Representative Edwards says, Oh, and she tells us the story of how she got in there. <laughs> and I still laugh about it to this day. Um, so we were going to talk about what now? LDS Church. LDS Church. So, yes, I, I, don't, I don't remember how this even happened. We just found ourselves sitting in the lobby of the LDS Church. and talk to them about those other... But that came after. Yeah, but that came after. Yes. So somehow you and I are sitting in their office... I don't that know how this happens. Because that's just how it is. It's more partisan. Right. And I think I think maybe just because action was new and we were able to just form this yeah. relationship with the junior um, uh, government relations of, uh, guy over there. And so he invited us in and, and we told him about the bill. And Becky was very... Um, very eloquent as always in her speaking and 
um, talking about the message and saying, you know, we were not, we're not, we're not trying to march. We're not trying to like rattle any cages. We just think that this is an important issue, and we believe you think it's an important issue too. And they said, you're right. This is one of our priority issues this year. We're going to run it up the chain and see what comes back. So, and it was a pretty great moment, I think, to have them say, yes, we will talk about it, because we have talked about the other bills um, subsequently that did not get that same reaction. <laughs> so, um, you know, the, when they finally came back with an answer, and this was weeks maybe, waiting and waiting and waiting for them to come back and say yes or no, um, and ultimately the answer was not yet, not no, but not yet. We're not really ready to move on this because there's not 100% agreement up at the top. And, um, and so we were able to say, is it accurate to say that we have approached the LDS church with the language for the resolution that matches the language of your website and that you agree with the premise and that you support it tentatively? And they said, yeah. That is okay to say. So, <laughs> so in our lobbying efforts, Michael and I spent a lot of time standing outside of that uh, House of Representatives calling people out. And um, Michael, we had a one-two punch system, right? Michael would come in with his <laughs> come in with his sheet of uh, supporters, and um, and they would be like, uh -huh, uh -huh. and if they looked really pleased with that, that was enough. But if they looked like they were still on the fence, I'd say no. <laughs> they just haven't really like come out and said that they support it, and I think that they will in 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 the near future. I just don't know if it's going to be soon enough um, for the legislative session before the end of the legislative session. And that sometimes would get them. Sometimes they'd be like, oh, but sometimes they'd be like, you know, I don't take my marching orders from the church. And like, okay, so it was it was a useful, it was a very useful tool. Um, very frequently, depending on who we're, it just depended on who we're talking to, right? Like, I think, um, you know, on, on some of them, like I said, it was really sufficient to hand them that uh, business sign-on letter, which was genius. And I remember one time in particular when the guy was like, yeah, good luck getting anybody big to sign on on that letter. And I'm like, actually, Ski Utah, <laughs> Silicon Falls, Rocky Mountain, Rocky Mountain Power. <laughs> and it was like the most smug I have ever felt. <laughs> okay, let me see that letter. Let me see that letter. Thank you. And I circle all of these people. Um, I don't know that I ever really even... Maybe I should have. Actually, I, I think we did mention it when people were on the fence and then they'd still be like, well, listen, she doesn't sway me one way or another. Like, okay, great, that's fine. Um, we had plenty of legislators say, this is just a resolution, it doesn't go right there. Like, right, it doesn't do anything, so why don't you vote against it? They'd be like, yes. <laughs> that's the point. <laughs> I don't even know, I can't remember at this point if they actually voted for that. Yeah, they did. Yeah. <laughs> they might great vote for it. He's like, okay. Uh, so yes, the LDS Church was instrumental, I think, in just being able to talk about the fact that we had visited with them and that they were also consulted. Um, and then a couple of weeks later, after the uh, after the legislative session was just a little bit too late um, for for our purposes, they actually read a letter over the pulpit talking about climate and the importance of um, environmental stewardship in in our uh, state and in the country and in the world and in their religious uh, faith and tenet. It was important to them, so I think that that was actually really helpful in at least at the very least moving the conversation. Forward and having people you wouldn't think were going to weigh in actually weigh in on the process. Thank you. Yeah, I think for all of us, it's important to know that that conversation has been open with the LDS Church. A lot of people in, in Utah and surrounding states say, well, where are they on this? Yeah. Right, so this yeah. is as much as we know. Yeah, I don't know if you guys saw that. You, uh, there was an article recently, the News Environmental Something News, and they talked a lot about the change. Um, the change that the state is uh, making, the people of the state are making towards environmental stewardship. And they quoted a lot of LBS uh, leaders, um, and I, I, I can't remember who, what his name, maybe uh, Oaks, who spoke at a BYU conference yeah. or in the midst of all this or right before all this, which who we were able to actually quote in the lobbying efforts that we made. So yeah, it was really helpful, and um, they are aware, and the conversation has been open. So, 
go nuts, CCL, get in there. <laughs> one, one thing that's important, and you just heard Carrie reference this, is that you can bring a lot of folks on board with a broad conversation as, as broad supporters, and their exact words don't have to mirror your exact words. It's okay to have and to trust high school students with their version of the message. It's okay to trust Michael and Heal, and, and they're probably more activists because that's their role as, as advocates. They're, they're probably more vigorous approach, and it's okay to have them take that version of the, the message forward. It's okay for me to work a political message forward and for us to reference the LDS Church and their message, and not all of those are going to look exactly the same, and that's okay because they all, in cooperation with each other, really help move the work forward. And to trust that you can have a lot of voices in one choir, um, and that it, to trust everyone's voice, I guess I'm saying. So I never worried about, wait, what is Mila saying our exact words? Is she using the word climate? Because if she's not, I don't want to quote her. Um, Heal is going a little bit too far. You gotta rein it in. You gotta bring it forward. You gotta. We need to be exactly the same. We weren't all exactly the same in our in our approach and our presentation. But there was trust and cohesiveness in a in a broad sense, if that makes sense. And I think that's that's helpful. And and Carrie kind of pointed that out. <laughs>